Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. I trust you guys are all well, doing fine, doing groovy. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. I know that no matter where you are in the world, it's a Saturday. Well, that's not necessarily true. There's some parts of the world that won't be Saturday, maybe Sunday. Could it be still Friday? But no matter, it's today. And today, this is all that matters. But we're here for a great conversation about you and your relationship to money, wealth, and worth. It is a live session. We are recording this for a lot of friends and family around the world. So if you're here live and in person, welcome and thank you. It's good to see a lot of uh, mastery students in the house. So uh, great to see uh, you, Naran, and Christian. It's good to see Louie and Nawam. I got lots of parts of different parts of the world here represented. Marlene, I hope you're well. Happy to see you up and about. We're all praying for you. We're pulling for you. She's got a good battle with something. So that being said, hopefully uh, the other guy, you should look at the other guy, she's saying. You should see the other guy. But uh, good to see you, Suzanne. It's good to see everyone here. It's also great to see some old friends in the house. And I'm not just talking about his age, because although he was born in 1886, he is still a reigning super speedo model. Jerry Rakowski, what's up, big fella? It's good to see you. It's good to see Juicy Bunny in the house. It's good to have Patrick in the house. It's good to see so many great old friends in the house. Latif, what's up, man? Good to see you, Eve. It's also great to see Vincent Sundar. Chris Dennis, what's up, Savage? It's good to have so many of our good friends here. And guys, we're going to get started because uh, the conversation we have on these days are around the conversation of a financial life. If you're writing down notes, I'd start there. For a lot of people who may know me or may not know me, my whole background, my whole life has been spent in the world of money. And I didn't come from a world of money. I mean, I wasn't born in the Lucky Sperm Club, I can tell you that. But I was born in an era where working in the financial services business was the thing to do. Because I watched a movie that presented a man by the name of Gordon Gecko, and I thought, man, that's cool. Greed is good. And so I had no idea what I was doing. I got in that space, and 25 years goes by just like this, and I realized I amassed a lot of great expertise, experience, and wisdom from that space, because that's what time does. You all get that? Just give me a thumbs up. When you put a lot of time into something, that creates wisdom, no matter what's the thing. No matter if you're up or down, whether you're right or wrong, you put enough time into something, wisdom becomes the thing. It just is. And I mean, when I was a youngin and I would look at the oldens, I would say, really, what's that all about? They said, well, you just wait and see. And in that snap of a finger, here we are, wiser and older. But it doesn't mean you have to be old to be wise. And it doesn't mean you have to be wrong and get things right to have wisdom. Wisdom comes with living, whether right or wrong, up or down, winning or losing. It's just the gift we're given for ultimately experiencing the truest luxury of life, and that's living. Growing old is the new luxury. It's the must-have. It's the whole rage. I don't care what the shiny thing is. I don't care what you're flying. I don't care what you're driving, wearing, or what watch can tell you time. As long as I'm living, it's the ultimate, most undeniable truth of all luxuries. Y'all get that? Give me a thumbs up. So God bless y'all. Keep healthy, keep safe, and stay sexy, which is easy for some of you. Like Rose, it's easy for you. Kathy, it's easy. Eileen, it's easy. Daniela, easy. Marlene, easy. You wake up sexy. It's easy. Right, Carolyn Flowers? Easy. Easy peasy. Staying sexy. So this conversation today is about a particular conversation I typically have with any of my clients, anyone I coach. And for those who know, a big part of my coaching practice, I provide financial coaching, money mentorship. I don't know who's sharing this discord, but whoever just did that, we got to take that down. So I don't know who that is. That's Leanne. I don't know how Leanne was able to do that. Well done, Leanne. You're able to record this. Um, so I don't know from Legacy's perspective who's managing our controls, but please manage more carefully. Um, I don't mind being recorded because whatever I share is the world. It's the universe. It ain't mine. It, it's, it's, it's the world. Do you all get that? Thumbs up. Um, just as long as you, in fact, don't record it when people are talking and sharing their own life story. I think that's important. You know, Respect people's privacy and their willingness to be vulnerable. I think that's important to respect. So that being said, uh, we'll make sure we put the, the, the fix in because I've never seen that before, to be quite honest. And all the shows I've done, I've never been able to see someone else get into my hosting ability. Right, Yusuf? You see what I'm saying? See, see why I need you on this side of the pond, man, so I can, I can put you into the, into, into the metaverse and, and, and take down somebody that's doing that. So anyways, for what I do, I'm, I'm an advisor and I, I present and provide 
a lot of thought leadership and a lot of guidance for people who are trying to shift their relationship financially with something. Now, again, as I've always said, and I always start here because there's some people that are here. By the way, show of hands if this is your first time here or first time in a long time. Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome. Good to see you, Jim, Jack, Jennifer. What's up, Bobby? Scoreboard in the background. And, uh, and if you're here often and regularly, just put your hands up. Let me just take a look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see you, Danielle. I see you guys. All right, cool. All right, good. Well, welcome back. So for me, what I, one of the things I recognize is one of the biggest things that we can do for anybody as a coach, as a mentor, as a trainer, is really shift people's relationship with their financial lives. Write that term down. I drill it home all the time. A financial life is defined by one's relationship to money, wealth, and worth. Those are three distinctions. And I just read my good friend's book, The Psychology of Money, and I feel like telling him, you know, you got it almost right, almost right, where he uses interchangeably references to the term worth and wealth, like they're the same. They're not the same. It's like saying water and ice and snow is the same. If you don't believe me, just walk outside if you're in New York and you tell me if water is the same as snow. You all follow that? Just give me a thumbs up distinctions are important. How you define terms are important because once you understand the term, we can then get to the source of the relationship. It's like being in marriage and saying that love's enough. Ah, I love her. Well, when have you shown it? Oh, I love him. I accept him for who he is. Really? Why is it he feels like he's walking with, a, with, a, with, a, with an ax to grind? So when you look at money, wealth, and worth, those are the three distinctions of our financial life. That makes up our financial life. Money is like currency. It's the stuff you've got. Wealth is the things that you accumulate. And worth is the power of choice and the power of freedom that you have. And I want to have a lot of life worth. I want to be able to have a lot of freedom and the power to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And that's the ultimate destination for why people invest their money and create wealth is to provide and produce the ultimate outcome, which is to have much worth. That's the key. And also, too, it's another stage and state in life conversation where the older we get, the wiser we become, and the real financial game reveals itself. So at this ripe age, I get to say it's not all about money. It's not all about fancy stuff and shiny things. It's about worth. It's about coming home when I said I would so I can celebrate my birthday with my son. It's, it's, it's about having the freedom to then jump back on a plane when I must to get to what I got to go get done. It, it's, it's not feeling tethered, weighed down, in or at the servitude of another, being under someone else's thumb. That's the ultimate freedom. That's the ultimate financial nirvana. So as people right now in 2022, what are you going to do? We're thinking about, well, I want to make a move. I want to quit a job. I want to make some more money. And I've got to say that there is an undisputable, recognizable trend that has now been forged. And that's this. Whatever we're doing, it's not enough. Whatever we're doing, it's not enough. Not with the cost of living, not with inflation skyrocketing, not with gas prices rocketing up, not with the cost of homes going up. Not, it's just not going to be enough. So you've got to know that you've got to grow financially. So growing financially means you can do one of three things. You can either save more money. You can go out there and actually generate more money. You can't make money. That's illegal. It's called, uh, you know, well, producing counterfeit bills. Or what you can do is you can go and create more sources for cash flow for you to grow. Now, I'm not going to talk about that. I want to talk about what gets people stuck. Because a lot of people here, just by show of hands, you find yourself getting stuck by producing more financially in your life. Anybody? Who here finds it that it's an up and down battle? Just do this with me. Look, it's an up and down battle. Got it. So I want to share with you a conversation that I would have with you if I were your coach. If I was your financial mentor, I would say this is the conversation we always have to get ourselves to be presence to. Because by doing that, what it allows you to do is it allows you to get back on the field of play. It allows you to get back on the field of play so you can get back in action because the only thing that produces financially more for you is doing more. It's the only thing. You can't just sit back and think that something's going to change. You can't sit back and think that the government will figure it out. 
You can't think and sit back and think that someone else is going to come to the rescue. Because financially speaking, it's like stepping on the elevator of life. And as you ascend, whatever floor you come out, even if it's the wrong one, only you have to deal with that. No one else will climb up to you. No one else will come rescue you, take you, pluck you, and put you on the right floor. You'll get that thumbs up. So right now, when it comes to having financially more, the number one demonstration of getting it is evidenced by the fact that you are moving. I'd write that down. You are moving. You've got to be moving. And learning is moving. But I've met a lot of people who are lifelong learners, but aren't lifelong earners. <laughs> I'm getting my new certificate, Richard. I'm getting another diploma, Richard. I'm going to another course there, Richard. And I mean, these are all great invitations of people who are real lifelong learners. But if you're going to be a lifelong learner, you've got to also equally be a lifelong earner applying what you learn in life, putting what you learn in a workshop in life, getting things fixed up. And that's where it comes down to. And as Carolyn just cited, yes, it is about applying it, but how? Because we do get stuck. Now, I got a lot of mastery students in here. Mastery students are defined as people who've been elected and chosen to be playing at a next level in causing and creating futures for people. If you're a mastery student, give me a thumbs up so the world out there knows. You get ready. Carmeet, I didn't see your thumb up there. There we go. So, those folks understand what it means to cause and create futures for people. And primarily, I like hanging out in the world of all things financial, because I would assert that when you are able to move the needle in, a finan in someone's financial life, that becomes the ultimate evidence that they can move the needle in any part of their life. Come on, guys. You remember the last time you had a little bit of a windfall? You, even, if it, even if it was finding 20 bucks in a jacket you forgot, winning a little lottery winnings, getting bingo on Sunday, or literally just realizing you have a little bit more than you expected. How did you feel in that moment? Better, brighter, lighter, or worse? You know what I'm talking about. I found 60 bucks in my jacket the other day. I thought I hit the jackpot. 60 bucks. That turned me on. That lit me up. That was 60 bucks I wasn't expecting to find. Now, I can't find it since then. I think that's what happens when you have a 15-year-old running your muck in the house. But I mean, the, the point is, is that, is that, is that when you come into a financial windfall, you don't fall. When you come into a financial windfall, you don't fall. And that's why consistently moving financially is so important because it does something psychologically for you. And what that is specifically is it's a little bit of dopamine. That's why kids are trading crypto today. They don't give a shit about currency. They're playing a game. Making money's a game for them right now. They're trades. They got their candle, candle indicators. They're, they're buying, they're selling, they're watching. It's a game. This new generation has discovered that making money is just a game, like playing Call of Duty or playing Fortnite, winning skins or asking for V-Bucks. Y'all tracking this, giving okay? But our generation, and by looking around here, those who are in the ages of like, let's say 20s to, what's our eldest here? Our eldest is 35. So, and, and if I miss anybody, I'm sorry. So the average age in this group is, let's say, 30-something. We're in a generation where we're still tainted. We're still tainted. With that, we have to work. It has to be hard. It has to be exhausting. And some might even think it has to be physical. That's why it's hard for you to even sit here and be present because you know you got floors to mop, breakfasts to make, lunches to prepare, something to do. Like you've got to do something. The younger generation is going to call, you know, Meals on Wheels or Uber Eats, and they're like, it's handled. You know, it's handled, Dad. You just relax. Food's coming. Get what I'm saying? Just give me a thumbs up. Nothing wrong with different generations, different stages, different states. So back to this group, what I do is I have a very clean conversation that always represents people to the financial game they got to play. And there are four pillars of playing that game, and all of you will get that today. You guys excited for that? Just give me a thumbs up. I'm going to give you the pillars. That way you know. And you can do this at any time. So whether you're trying to get your own financial life in a very different place or what you're wanting to do is coach other people to get their financial life in a particular place or you want to make it a business of providing financial coaching and money mentorship, which is what I do, then this is the starting point. It's this conversation I'm about to have with all of you right now that really sets the trajectory for all things that come next. Y'all get me? 
All right, so let's start at the beginning. Imagine you yourself, you wanna have more. You wanna make more money. You wanna get a side hustle on. You, you wanna create residual passive income, but you just feel like you're stuck. You don't know where to start. You don't know where to begin. And oftentimes you find yourself talking yourself out of it. And the way in which that shows up is you start to justify what you're not doing. You begin to normalize what enough even means. I don't need new stuff anyways. You know what? I'm happy living here anyways. You know what? Vacations are all, you know, there is global warming. So why do I need to go somewhere hotter? I'm just going to get sick. You talk yourself out of it. Who's tracking this? Give me a thumbs up. Tracking yourself out of the things you really want, really desire, but you don't have the guts and or the gumption to get it. And so you start to talk yourself down. You start to kind of back off. You start to kind of think about something else. You feel me? So what you've got to do is you've got to first take on, straight on. You've got to take on understanding what's truly threatening your financial life. You've got to start with understanding. If you're writing any terms down, start with this one dangers. You've got to start with dangers. You see, my old mentor, Dr. Paul Stoltz, once taught me that when it comes to understanding your relationship to adversity, you've got to be willing to confront powerfully and head on the strongest headwinds you can find. Because it's only when you confront the most daunting of tasks financially, do you actually acclimatize to the real level of game you've got to play. So said in English, said in English, it's about saying, well, if I now need to face the dangers, what are all the dangers I have in my financial life right now? What are the worst case scenarios that can unfold in my life? Now, guys, I got to warn you, this is a tough one. This is the beginning of the conversation, but it could be the end of it for a lot. The unwillingness, though, of really facing those headwinds will rob you of the energy that comes with them because it's at the center of the flame that the heat burns brightest. It's by leaning into those dangers. Do you begin to really feel that you're at the effect, not of them, but of what comes next for you? So what are some of the dangers that you could have? Well, some of the obvious ones that people often have is like, I don't want to run out of money. Another is I don't have enough money. So I'm, I'm living in a deficit position. I go to work, I make money, I have expenses, I never have enough. So I'm burying myself. Some people also feel like they're overwhelmed with debt. I have a lot of people that are actually still carry student debt, well into their 30s, even some into their 40s. Some have also called what's called an STD, a, 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 a sexually transmitted debt. They hooked up with a woman or they got themselves a real nice young fella and all of a sudden they have adopted that debt. So they've adopted debt because of the fact that they came together and on it goes. So dangers are the things that is a threat to your financial existence. So I'm going to deal with the biggest one first. And here's the thing. When you're not really clear as to what the worst case scenarios are, what the challenges really are, what the real upsets really are whether it's you've lost trust in people when it comes to giving, getting financial advice, whether it's being able to, in fact, do things with your money, whether it's just to, in fact, take action. If you're not dealing with the very thing that's the danger, you can't do what is actually really out there. I want you to write this down, folks, because this is a big one. How you relate to your financial dangers gives rise to your financial strengths. So if you find people that are really financially successful, it's because they really powerfully dealt with their financial threats. When you find people that have really, really got momentum in their realm, whether it's my buddy Grant Cardone, whether it's my friend Tony Robbins, whether it's my beloved, one of my earliest mentors, God rest his soul, Bob Proctor. I mean, God bless that beautiful man. I mean, when you think about all of them, as I have been able to, so blessed to work with all of them, but they would always ask, what are your top challenges right now that you're confronted with? What are the concerns? What are your anxieties? 
What's keeping you up at night? What makes you lose sleep? What are you obsessed over, concerned about? Now, if you're in the sales training business, like my brother down there, Chris Dennis, like, I mean, if you run performance uh, labs and clinics like Keith UT, I mean, if you're already coaching people in MLM, like Katie Shea, my partner in all things, rich ladies, if you're, if, if you're publishing books for people like Carolyn Flowers, I mean, all these people who are doing wonderful, beautiful things for people, the number one thing that will be in their way, the client's way of listening to your sales training, taking your advice, even listening to your coaching is having them to powerfully confront and own what scares them. It's the only way. It's like the old saying of feeling the fear and doing it anyway. So who can share with me a couple of dangers right now that's out there? Why don't you put it in the chat room? Let's see what have you got. What's up, Jeff, the entrepreneur? It's good to see Daniel Tucci making calls. Let's hear what you got to say there, Louis. Come on in. Hey, morning, Rich. Just quickly, I wanted to touch on the amount of uncertainty people are facing these days, I think, is really holding people back from moving forward in what they want to do. I think that's a huge one. Absolutely, it is. And I mean, you're, you're, a, seasoned, you're a seasoned financial coach, you know, of course doing what you do. I don't know if I just cut you off, but um, did, did, did you get everything in there? Okay, cool. Um, absolutely. I mean, Dr. Bobby says, you know, fear of losing my money, all those wonderful things. So the number one thing that you guys have got to do for yourself, even first, and then do it for your clients is you've got to take a listing of all the dangers in their life. And those are described as things that they're concerned about, fears that they have, threats that are there. You must, you must, you must. Because everything that we then do positively, right, Kathy? Everything that we do for the betterment of our financial lives, right, Patrick? Everything that we're willing to put into action, put into play, right, Jean, Vincent? Everything is going to not be in response of the presence of that knowledge, but in spite of them. They won't sit back here like it's an unconscious concern that you're not fully aware of, like a blind spot. So said a different way, and I said this before, that unless you're able to distinguish the things that are in the area of unknown, you won't move. Because when they're undistinguished, they create what's called a financial blind spot. When you're not powerfully confronting and owning what the dangers are in your financial lives, you leave them out of view. That's evidenced by not opening up your bank statements or your investment statements. They're left in the, the envelope, sealed, and in the drawer. Like you'll get to them another time. And then they start to stack up until they fall over because envelopes don't stack well. <laughs> or you don't take calls from your financial planner, or you stop looking at what the stock market's doing, or you stop even balancing your checkbook because you're afraid to know what the balance truly is. And so we lose touch with knowing that you're the author. You're the tail that wags the dog. But instead, the dog is still wagging you. So being able to powerfully know the dangers allows you to know what you're clearly up against so that you can face that opponent head on, fully lit and fully illuminated, fully aware. Now, when you're fully aware and you acknowledge it, you can own it. That's what distinguishing what's there means. And I've shared this with my mastery students just yesterday, and I love for you all to write this down, but my mastery students will get this because I said it already. You cannot get more. You cannot get more. You cannot get more money, more wealth, more worth until you first distinguish what's disserving you. You cannot. Because here's what will happen. And you can ask some really successful people I know, like Terrence, who's on the call, and Phil, who's on the call. I mean, you can, you can talk to Keith and Vincent, my God. Naran, who else here would have that experience that I know real well? Marlene. And then that, what's up, Giselle? The point is that what we do is rather than distinguishing what doesn't work, what we go and we make more money, but more money 
packed on top of a foundation that doesn't work, dangers not addressed, blind spots undistinguished, only has us being a servant to creating more in order to make up for what we don't know. So said in English, to make more money and to have more wealth and to produce more worth, we must first know what we don't own. We must first have an entire and complete totality without any hindrance. Light up every single corner in your financial life to see what you are out, what you owe, what you are needing, and what you require. And not just when it comes to what you need, but also to what it means to have what you want and then what you deserve. Who remembers that math? Give me a thumbs up. What you need is a 1x game. What you want is a 2x game, which is basically a 2x what you need. But a what you deserve is a 10x game. Because the real pain in people isn't in the getting it. It's in the wanting it. That's where the culprit lives, is in the wanting. The pain in the world of all things financial is in the wanting, not in the getting. So the first thing we need to know is what do we need to actually, in fact, survive? The danger. Now, remember, before I go to the second step, you've got to know that we are built only to do one thing. What is it? Who's going to be the first to tell me? Put in the chat room. Who's the first to tell me? Whoa, you said that was fast. That's right. That's right. Survive. We're surviving machines. That's the one thing our brains has perfected over 3 million years, the act of surviving. So when we don't powerfully confront the dangers, all we're doing is getting by. All we're doing is staying small. All we're doing is playing an insignificant game and not playing to our true potential because safe means survival and survival is what we are innately built to do. And that's okay. But no one here on a Saturday morning, right? No one here wants to just get by. No one here wants to feast with enough. This is it, guys. This is the only life you'd be given. This is the only play you'll get to run through. You get to have it all. So confronting those dangers is the first door to getting more. Confronting and understanding your dangers is the first door to getting more. Everyone get that? Give me an okay? Fantastic. Let's go to the second one then. Because once you're able to really understand what the dangers are, then you're able to, in fact, look at what the opportunities are. So opportunities are all about the things, the possibilities, and more importantly, the options that are available to you as a result of powerfully distinguishing and now owning the dangers that are in your financial lives. Just think in your own life, how often you don't see an opportunity in front of you because of fear, apprehension, hesitation, self-doubt, uncertainty, lack of confidence. Who here knew it was a great idea to buy Apple stock? when you bought your first Apple IIe, or you started noticing the stock was climbing because they came up with this thing called the iPod, or when the rage was all out there about the Apple iPhone, and you told yourself, gosh, that'd be a great stock to buy. And did you? I mean, there's countless examples of watching the world unfold in such a way that's actually aligned with your thinking, aligned with your belief, but something kept you from actually participating fully. That's the danger. And the way, and my mastery students will get this, and if you're a rich youth student, you'll understand, I've talked about this before, the keepers, the three keepers, the psychological makeup that holds you back, keeps you small, the keeper of judgment, ego, and fear, they hold you in place. They're built to keep you safe. But until you can tell them, I got the dangers, you cannot see the opportunity. In other words, your view is skewed by your relationship to your dangers, given the opportunities out there in the world. So in other words, whether I'm coaching you or you're coaching others, until people are able to really distinguish what they're playing their money game for, they can't see opportunities in front of them. 
because the opportunities are only then going to be approached as a means to getting by. And that's why, for example, sales training, cold calling, door knocking, the people who are really successful in that, building teams, growing MLM networks, doing really well at raising money or finding investors. I don't care what that game is. Like if you're in the game of finding more, the people who are really good at it are really clear and really cool with the financial dangers in their life. They're really clear with where that is. Until they get that handled, nothing appears as an opportunity. So once you coach yourself and once you coach other people, first, what are my dangers? A complete inventorization of what are all the threats in your financial life? What do you need? What do you owe? What do you require, et cetera? Be clear. I, I get it. It's going to be daunting. It could feel overwhelming. Don't make yourself wrong. This is not a, play, a place that you'll judge yourself. There's no right or wrong. It's just the clearer the picture, the wider the path. The clearer the picture, the wider the path. It's like golfing with a golf club that's very forgiving. Anyone ever heard of one of those? <laughs> don't, ask, don't believe me, ask C-Rock. He golfs with one. I'm kidding, C-Rock. I'm just kidding. But you can actually buy varying degrees of a golf club that actually is, well, varying degrees of forgiveness. Even to the point that they become illegal. You couldn't go on a PGA tour with one. So that's the same aspect to understanding dangers. Opportunities aren't just business opportunities. Opportunities are also if you needed to make more money and generate more wealth and worth, what are all the opportunities you see in your world? Starting with your place of work, looking at the industry you're in, looking at the city or town that you live in, perhaps even the province or state that you reside in. And a great way to really approach where all the opportunities are is to ask yourself this question, what problem remains unsolved where I am? That perhaps I could be at the source of solving it for people. And there are so many, as if the pandemic didn't exasperate most of them. And thanks to the lack of leadership in the world, not just in America, certainly not just in Canada or Australia or in parts of Europe, the world is starving for leadership and yet still drowning in information. Who here believes they can lead people into a couple of solutions? You get what I'm saying? So opportunities are not gonna grow faster. This is a very advanced statement I'm about to make, and I really want my mastery students to lean in and listen to this. The clearer people are about the dangers, the clearer the opportunities appear because their view is not skewed. So even if someone only has one or two or three opportunities, they're huge and get bigger because their view is untethered. It is clean. It is clear. So dangers and opportunities are the two pillars inside of a getting started, represencing yourself to getting a financial life bigger and greater, the one in which you need. Now, the third, you're right, Phil, the third is the strengths. And, and this is one of my favorites because what we don't realize is everyone on this call, from, from, from Asha to, to Dimitri to Phil to Jim to Bill to what's up, Christian? What's up, Bethany? Bethany, you get my voice message? All right, I'll, I'll take your call. We'll talk about stuff if you need me. What's up, Nima? Africa in the house. What's up, ladies? iPad. Don Rossum. What's up, Vladimir? Privet. Good to see you, man. Doug V in the house. I love you, man. It's good to see you, bro. I mean, all you folks, you all have strengths. So what you want to do is make a list where you are a living financial demonstration of getting it right, remaining strong, doing good. Hey, Eve, is that your, uh, is that your twin in the house? You guys look like twins. What's up, man? You get what I'm saying? So when you look at your strength, it's, it's not like, what are you really good at? It's not about talking about what are you really gifted at. It's not even about like how I'm really good at making money. No, 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 no. Strength is where you've demonstrated financial strength. 
hey, Eve, if that's your son, he's all, he's all his mother. <laughs> I'm kidding. You all get what I'm saying? Sometimes we think that strength is about what's yet to come. No, strength is the reminder of who you already are and consistently so. Paying your rent, paying a mortgage, paying your bills, generating an income, keeping food on the table, feeding your kids, keeping employees paid. I mean, the list goes on depending on what game you play and what state and stage in life you're at. You're playing a game. And sometimes what we do is we normalize all the games we're playing. And even though we're playing them, you still need to call them a win. Your strength must include all the things you consistently do financially. You need to get represents to, to that. Now, you guys ready for an advanced insight? I'm going to get a bit neuroscientific. My mastery students won't mind this. You see, the reason why we don't take inventory of our strengths in anything is because the keepers are designed to keep you small. And the one thing that they do not like is you talking about what you're strong at. What you're strong at. You judge, you judgment, fear, ego. Whoa, 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 slow down, Rich. Keep yourself calm. Speak low. Don't tell people what you do. Don't tell the people what you're up to. Your keepers want to keep you small because small equals survival. Insignificant means safe. So when you get an award, when you get an acknowledgement, and mastery students, we just talked about this yesterday, even when you get a happy birthday wish, oh, no, no, it's okay. Don't, don't wish me a happy birthday. Shh, it's okay. Don't, you don't have to get me nothing. No, 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 no. We're, it's not us. It's the keeper keeping you small, keeping you insignificant not wanting me to shine, not wanting to grow strong. Why? Because that's a threat. Anything more than enough is a threat. So when you start getting yourself represented to your strength, that is rallying up the mental fortitude to do more. And so that's the biohack. The biohack is being able to represent yourself consistently to what are your financial strengths. Where in my life on a monthly basis am I a clear and confident financial demonstration of being strong? Guys, that's huge. People not feeling right, people not feeling confident, people not clear and obviously moving with the momentum and a gravitas that they deserve and need, snap out of it. Let's talk about your strengths and they'll get represents to it. The problem that I, why we're not is because we're not wired to be present to our strengths. We're only wired to be present to the dangers. And what do most people do when they see danger? We run, we hide, or we huddle. And at best, if we're lucky, we go to Starbucks and gather around a little cup of courage and say, okay, well, that, this is Tuesday, right? A little cup of courage. Or you're smart and you pack your things and you move to Costa Rica because you want to change the landscape of the game you're playing. Right, Monica? So, so the conversation that we're having so far is about how do you start a real courageous conversation about rewiring people to play their financial life game right? And what I'm saying as a financial uh, well, coach and money mentor, where I start is understanding first, where are the dangers? Have us Hit those head on. What are all the worst case scenarios that can go on? What are all the things that are concerning you? What are all the things that keep you up? What are all the things you're obsessed about? What's obsessing your mind, keeping you rattled and in your own proverbial cage? Second is what are all the opportunities? And opportunities aren't just about the opportunities of investing in business. Opportunities could be, how do you get another raise? How do you get a different position? How can you offer more value in your world? How can you, in fact, see opportunities where you can make a difference, make a dollar, and love doing so while doing all that? And then the S is for the strengths. What are your financial strengths? What are your financial life strengths? You know, Danielle, you'll appreciate this given that you're going through a real tough time right now. And I mean, it's tough, but you cannot lose sight of your strengths. You cannot. 
Your child is watching. And no matter who cares and who doesn't, what matters is your life is going to be the template in which your child will be inspired by. So you must remain present to your strengths, how strong you are. Look for where we're a financial demonstration in your lives, because then that brings us to the E. And the E is my favorite. The E is my favorite, because that's where I wield my magic. That's where, for those who follow me and understand that I provide a lot of financial life advice to Horatio Pagani, Mike Tyson. I mean, just over the past weekend, I'm now an official advisor for the Marley House, which is the Bob Marley House of Family Members. I mean, what to go on here, man? Let's get this thing, Irene, man. I mean, I, I mean, what magic and blessing is this? Being able to provide that conversation is what leads me into great opportunities of coaching more. That E is everything. That's not what it stands for, but it is in this equation. Once I get people clear on the dangers, once we start opening up our minds to the opportunities, once we fortify that conversation and ground yourself with the strengths, then we look to expand. We look to expand. And this is where Brother Cardone comes in. This is where we 10 exit. Because if we strong at something, we can 10 exit. If we have a strength in any domain in our lives, if you can raise a dollar, you can raise a million. If you've already found one investor, you can find 100. If you've already touched one life, you can touch 100. You all tracking this? Just give me a thumbs up. So the E is for expansive. It's what parts of your strengths, given the opportunities you see, and now you're cognizant of the dangers. Where do we expand? Where do we explode? Where do we elevate? <laughs> Because that's where transcension lives. That's where we get to do this, right? Not do this. This is not a linear conversation. And for a lot of my financial brothers and sisters in here, like Naran and Gumnani, um, Noam and Ohad, I mean, you guys get this. Terrence, you get this. Phil gets this. Dennis, you get this. Vincent, especially you, Keith. And if I missed you, I apologize. But you get what I'm saying. Like, it's not enough to just get linear financially. Because linear isn't enough. There will come a time in our lives where we'll begin to earn less, need more. Don't believe me? Ask anybody over the age of 55 who's all of a sudden welcoming back more children than they had. <laughs> Hold on, I had three kids. Why is there six kids in this house? <laughs> I love you, grandchildren, but man, these picnic need to go home now. I mean, it's the way it rolls, but that's okay. To build that strength and fortitude, we have to not think like this. We have to think like this. And it doesn't require more courage and more bold moves. It just requires you to be clear. It requires you to be aware. It requires you to accept, to atone, and then align. So you can activate. Sounds familiar, right, Katie? So when you get those dangers and opportunities and strengths, now you can see everything as an expansive. So can I tell you a quick little story? about how I build my coaching practice. The way I built my coaching practice that's very successful, I'm not successful because I have millions of people that subscribe to my stuff. I'm, ex I'm really successful in our business because I take a client and I expand them. And I take a percentage of what we expand from. That's why I hang out with a lot of celebrities or business owners that seem celebrity. It's not because I only like celebrities, it's because whatever they're doing is so big, I want a piece of it. So my whole point is, hey, if I'm able to two, five, or 10x this, I want a small piece of what I grow. If I don't grow what you've got, you keep everything you've always had. But if I expand it, oh, I want a piece of that and in perpetuity. So of course, when I talk to a Rohan Marley, who's got Marley coffee, and they got all kinds of Marley mystic stuff, the Marley clothing brand. He goes, man, if you're going to double 2x, 5 or this thing called 10x and you want a percentage of it, man, what's it going to be? It's going to be scratch off my back. In English, that means, why do I care? Because now you're playing like a partner, not just a solution provider, not just a serviceman. This is where you transcend from coach to mentor to trainer to advisor. Because now when he has money moves to make or business actions to take, he calls me first, not as lawyer, not as accountant. Why? 
because I'm behaving and relating to his goals financially like we're partners. Because truthfully, we are. And that's the relationship you want to have if you're a coach, mentor, or trainer. Now, if you're just here and you want to get your own financial life right, you've got to know that you're the ultimate first and only shareholder that matters in your life, in your company. So when you're up, you're up. When you're down, you're down. So expansive means being able to take what opportunities you've seen, now knowing the strengths you've got, how can you expand them into more? Remember those moments when you watch a cartoon or a DC or Marvel movie? You know, the, the timeline, the, the journey for the discovery of the superhero's superpowers. It's like bizarre. And then they, and then they, they test the superpower, whether it's Spider-Man with a web or Superman with flight, whatever the superhero was, if you were to understand, if you're tracking this ideology, yeah? But there comes a point where they then finally realize they've got these powers. And then they begin to explore those powers. They begin to test the limits of those powers. And in testing the way in which you can expand the use of a superpower, you begin to own all the powers that come. Because here comes an advanced statement. When you begin to expand the game you play, you become that expanded game. There is no going back. Now, I'm going to say that one more time. For people like Mark Jean, for people like Keith, who's now playing this, Marlene, who's playing this, Igniting Humanity, Monica, who's playing this, um, people I really know, Nima, uh, Doug V, Christian, Louis, especially, Vincent, especially, super especially. I mean, you got to all understand this. Once you expand the playing field in understanding all the new ways you can, in fact, expand, explode, and elevate your financial gain, you no longer are consumed by the dangers. The shadow that the dangers has cast on your financial life is dwarfed by the shadow your expanded financial life now casts on it. Or as Grant Cardone would often say, is that if you move fast, the shit won't stick. But to do that responsibly, you don't want to slip on it either because it's doubly messy. You fall, you hurt yourself, and you'll stink for a long time. <laughs> so that's a nasty thing to happen. So I'm going to pause for a second because I want to hear your voices. What have I said that resonates with you? I want to hear what have you got. And by the way, if you're following this, that's what I call the dose conversation. I give a little bit of dose of new financial life reality. <laughs> financial life reality, a little dose of new financial life reality. D, danger. O, opportunity. S, strength. E, expand. Dose, acronym. A little dose of financial life reality. Once you're able to get clear about that financial life reality, guess who gets to shift it? Who? Who can shift it? You can shift it because that's your financial life. Your financial life is made up of a composition of those four conversations. But in order to open the door to more, you have to start with dangers. And that is the fundamental problem in the world of all things financial. We cannot get people making cold calls, Chris, or, or knocking on more doors or pursuing more with crypto or entering the metaverse or thinking about protecting their lives with insurance or even raising money or tapping their line of credit. You can't get people to think about more if they don't open the door. They have got to first powerfully confront the dangers and see that they can live to see another day with them being present to them and owning them. So now they can exploit the opportunities, leverage their strengths, and expand on both. Until they powerfully confront those dangers, none of that stuff makes sense. None of those things will happen. So I'd love to hear from any of my mastery students in particular, because they've been swimming in this stuff for quite some time. What did you hear? What did you like? What do you want to say, repeat, or regenerate so that this now not only becomes a download, but now an upload? This is something that you're now internalizing. Let's go to my brother here, Naran Kalathungam, all the way out in Toronto. Hey, Rich. Hello, everybody. Rich, I've been in uh, your universe for a while, and uh, I've, this is, I've gone through your training before, and I've, I've taught it. But one of the things that, that really, you know, I'm reminded again is that when you look at your strengths and especially your dangers, 
it's not a one-time event. I find that after I've, done, I've gone through a process and I've, I've kind of grown to a certain level, I then have to revisit them again and represence them. Otherwise, it kind of gets left in the background and it's no longer front and center. And what I noticed is that when it is no longer front and center, I shows up as weakness in the way I show up in the world. So the avoidance of danger of facing it actually results in weakness in the way I respond to threats, which is opposite. I love that. I, I love that. And, and just so everyone's catching this, I mean, Naran is a very accomplished, actually, he's one of the most seasoned financial coaches that I've ever trained and developed because he's been around it since its origination of IP. So I'm grateful for that, by the way, brother. Um, but more importantly, is I want everyone to write this down. People will listen and follow your lead if you can demonstrate you've done the work first. So that's why whether it's the financial life or whether you're training people in sales or whether you're raising money or whether you're done real estate, whatever it is, unless you've done it first, people won't follow. Because what are they really trying to find? This is a very testy question, by the way, before I go up to Marlene, Nima, and then Jan. What they're listening for, who's listening, by the way, to you when you coach, lead, and counsel? It's not them. It's their keepers. And their keepers are looking for, is this authentic? Is this real? Can we trust them? And so when you speak about what there is to do, what it's trying to detect, the mental construct is, do I trust this person that they know what they're talking about? They know how this is going to go. This is why the number one question I ask of any server at my table when I eat, that's like, do you eat here? No, I'm just kidding. But it's a good question. <laughs> oh, it's fabulous. Well, what do you think about the veal piccata? Well, the veal piccata, let's see. And I can watch. Like, oh, so you don't eat here. You just serve here. <laughs> you get my point there, Naran? All right, cool. So I'm really, oops, I, I just did that by accident. So I just, what I wanted to say is that that's what it means. It means for you to be doing the work allows you then to lead from the place that your customers, your clients, your investors, or your coachees want to be. Remember, when you attract coach clients, when you attract uh, customers, you're attracting not because of your marketing, you're attracting them not because of your wonderful collaterals, you're attracting them to the life you're living, the way you're being, the way you're speaking, how clear you become, how in action you are. They want that because you're clearly walking down the path that they would like to be a part of. Make sense? All right, cool. Let me go to Marlene, then Nima, then Jan. What's up, Kathy Dunbar? Good morning, everybody. Um, yes, I, I think that for me, when I see my possibilities, when I look into my, my possibilities and my opportunities, I'm looking towards my future. And when I do that, I'm focusing on generating um, new, new events that perhaps are racing bar for me in my life, where I can acquire more. And as I'm doing that, as I'm progressing forward, I feel like I'm facing my challenges. I'm facing what I fear, which is in, in my in my life, what I'm looking for is to gain more, yes, to gain more like real estate, to become more financially independent. And when I do that, I feel that I'm facing my fear instead of just not doing anything, instead of just staying at home or you know, having an average job, I'm going towards exactly where um, it is that I really truly want to expand. So I think that it's very important to, as a coach, as a mentor, it's very important to be aware of like how to, how to not chase, but how to live into the future because that's how we generate, that's how I feel I generate my, um, my lead. So that when I'm teaching, when I'm, when I'm speaking to clients, when I'm meeting new people, they're looking at me because I'm generating things and they're looking into, wow, she's generating things, I can, I can generate things too. And so they're more likely, they're mo most likely, I'm sorry, they're most likely to listen to me and to trust me because I'm living the effect. I'm living the, I'm living by, by, by action. And so to me, that's really important, so. That's, that's right, it. that's right. No, it's very, very important. I'm really glad to hear your voice. And again, I, I wish you a speedy recovery, Marlene. But um, man, I don't know if you guys grew up 
in a house or in a place where you were afraid of a place, afraid of a closet, afraid of that third bedroom or afraid of the, the, the basement, or if you were like me, a, a, an attic, an attic that I mean was a really creepy place. And what was the smartest thing a parent or a grandparent could have done back then? Drag you into the place that you feared the most. To turn on the lights and show you what was there and what wasn't there. And as death defying as that was, when you turn the lights on, you get to own the room you're in. Now that room metaphorically is your mind. A lot of things that we're really afraid of and are upset with are in the mind. So until we put them on paper and say, these are all the things I'm dealing with, at least you own them, they don't own you. Because until you own them, they are running the show and largely are keeping you depressed. I don't mean depressed as a mental depression, because that's another serious situation. I mean, depressed as in like pushed down, maybe suppressed is a better word, right? But, but pushed down so that you, you are afraid to act. And that's why that's a compounding effect right? It ends up growing. And, and like most, most debt, it grows. Um, and that's important. Let's go to Nima, who I think is all the way out in Africa. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Greetings from Tanzania. Yes. Nice. So yeah, this, yeah, this topic was really great, especially the dangers. I think we've spoken about it before. And uh, what really stands out is the fact that we should almost take an inventory of them because personally for me, how I deal with stress or problems or dangers, I tend just to ignore them and I hope they disappear. <laughs> so I like the fact that I actually have to face them face on and it actually works. It's like switching on the lights when you're scared. Like in the room, you're like, there's literally nothing in the room, <laughs> but it's just the fear, the mind. And I think it comes with the keepers, the ego. For me, the biggest one would be fear and a little bit of ego. So yeah, so it's, it's good to know that I like the fact that we got reminded today about taking inventory of that. So good. That's it. Good. I'm happy to hear it. I'm happy to hear your voice. I hope that Africa is treating you uh, well in Tanzania. So send our love to your family. But 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 Nima hit the nail on the head that when you're able to really turn the light on to the things that you're avoiding, you can then get going. When you can deal with and clearly see for yourself what you're avoiding, you can then get going. That's the piece that really we don't want to step over. Remember, until you can open up that door, there is no more. What we do is we pack on other strategies and approaches, and we think that we're going to solve the problem. When really, fundamentally, we're still running. We're still scared. We're still afraid. We don't want to be discovered, right? We keep up appearances. And all of a sudden, it all becomes a whole collection of facade. It becomes a smoke and mirror show. And what we really want, especially financially, as we've only got a few minutes left together this morning, is you really want a financial life that's alive and authentic. Lots of people can borrow money to buy shit they don't need. Lots of people can go out there and drive around in fancy cars, making that mean something or projecting something. But what I think we're in right now in our existence as a mankind is we just want to get real. You all with me? Just thumbs up. Real, clean, authentic. I am what I am, and I am what I'm not, and I'm cool with both. I want. I, I know everyone wants to walk like that. Jan, how are you? Good morning to you, dear. I am awesome. Good morning. So I just want to acknowledge and thank you for having this conversation because for me, it drives home the point of staying in the conversation and repeatedly hearing. We've done this before. We've had this conversation before, and I don't know why, but for some reason, it didn't sink in. And as you talked about that, I suddenly realized, oh, you haven't powerfully dealt with this. And what I haven't powerfully dealt with are dangers and opportunities. So I know what they are. At least I sort of think I know what they are because they're in my head. I know I've done the exercise, but the powerfully part is not there. So staying in the conversation as a coach, staying in the conversation as a consumer, and um, as soon as this call's over, I get to sit down and deal with that. So that's my takeaway. Beautiful. I mean, and that's the key, right? For everybody that uh, heard Jan, who's one of the most courageous souls I've ever met, it, it's, it's about just really owning the danger and not living according to them. And if there's any notes you want to write down, write that down. That's the greatest thing you can get out of becoming a financial coach or a money mentor 
is really getting people to live on top of those fears, doubts, concerns, and upsets rather than underneath them, rather than being subject to them, rather than being caused by them. Because remember, before I go to Suzanne here, is either you're causing and creating your financial future or those dangers and the things that keep you small are causing you. That's a big deal, what I just said. Either you're causing that financial future that's designed by the 10x life that you want, or your dangers are causing you. Come on in, Suzanne. Hey, Richie. Great call today. And always represencing this makes such a difference for all of us. And like Jan, we've been through this dose conversation to bring it forward. One of the things I think some of us make a mistake too is not, you know, we all surround ourselves with like-minded people to some degree. Like you're the average of the five people you're you're around. And a lot of people don't go back and take inventory of what they've risen up to and what they've conquered and the challenges they've overcome. And sometimes I think going back to inventorize what you've already overcome helps you face some of these dangers and elevate and go further. Like don't forget about how powerful you are when you're trying to overcome some of this with the mental mindset. Every one of us is here with some sort of electronic advice, device right? So you came from poverty, at least to have something to be here to be able to on this call. So uh, I, I think representing to your wins is also a great way to help do this. My feedback and thoughts and takeaways. So no, I love I love that you said that I think, um, you know, true and form to what you said. And as a continuation of that, but of course, the conclusion of this call, it's amazing how fast an hour can go. I'm so grateful for all of you, by the way, is here's what you want to do. I want you to write down right now, if you can, the one person that you've looked up to your entire life financially, the one person that you thought to yourself, gosh, when I grow older, when I get bigger, when I grow up, I want to be like them. And if you can't think of them, it might be someone that you're actually inspired by now. And what you want to figure out is how do they relate to their dangers? What opportunities do you see them taking advantage of? How do you see their strengths and how they own them? And last but not least, how are they expanding them? Because really, as human beings, we're copycats. We emulate those who are succeeding in areas and domains of life that, in fact, provide us the results in which we are in search of. You want love? You're likely in love with the people that your parents looked as though they were in love with. You want money? You're probably pursuing it the exact same way your family and friends have and have done so. In other words, you're a mirror for what you're inspired by. So that the takeaway from this coaching call today is go and look at the one person that you've continued to look up to or someone that inspires you and ask yourself, how do they relate to their dose, their dangers, opportunities, strengths, and their means to expand? And you just might, and I mean, you just might be that much more inspired by how you can then too. Good call today, guys. Thumbs up. Fantastic. Hey, listen, if you want to learn more about how you can provide financial coaching and money mentorship through a program that I've created based on my 30 years of experience doing this, like I'm so excited that I'm countrifying this model with great friends that are already on the call. Uh, if you want to learn more, let us know. You can go to our website. You can check us out online. You can go to richarddolan.com or you can just simply write me. But for today, a live call with all of you on a Saturday morning is always blessed. It's always beautiful. And I love always without compromise they're bold so thanks for joining me this morning from wherever you are thank you jerry and doug giselle and phil terrence and noam karmit and ohad mike and rose suzanne all of you thank you so much for being here eves and his son who looks a lot more like his mom thank you all for being here i'm grateful to be a part of your life and uh, more grateful to cause and create a powerful financial future together be well stay blessed stay safe but more importantly remain rich in the things that matter most to you